Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and last time we looked at the reasons why some people deny that Mary is perpetually virgin. This time we'll be looking more at the history of the belief itself and how many major Christians and Christian churches have believed this teaching. First, we know that the fathers of the church believed in the perpetual virginity of Mary. There are quite a few quotes to indicate this. If they had been Mary's sons and not those taken from Joseph's former marriage, she would never have been given over in the moment of the passion to the apostle John as his mother. The Lord saying to each woman, Behold your son, and to John, Behold your mother. As he bequeathed filial love to a disciple as a consolation to the one desolate. St. Hilary of Poitiers in this quote, the word they refers to the brethren of Jesus, and the passion refers to the crucifixion of Jesus. And to holy Mary, virgin is invariably added, for that holy woman remains undefiled. St. Epiphanius of Salamis It helps us to understand the terms firstborn and only begotten when the evangelist tells that Mary remained a virgin until she brought forth her firstborn son, for neither did Mary, who is to be honored and praised above all others, marry anyone else, nor did she ever become the mother of anyone else. But even after childbirth, she remained always and forever an immaculate virgin. St. Didymus the Blind Imitate her, holy mothers, who in her only dearly beloved son set forth so great an example of material virtue, for neither have you sweeter children nor did the Virgin seek the consolation of being able to bear another son. St. Ambrose of Milan Heretics called Antidicomarites are those who contradict the perpetual virginity of Mary and affirm that after Christ was born she was joined as one with her husband. St. Augustine The Word himself, coming into the Blessed Virgin herself, assumed for himself his own temple, for the substance of the virgin, and came forth from her a man in all that could be externally discerned, while interiorly he was true God. Therefore he kept his mother a virgin even after her childbearing. St. Cyril of Alexandria By divine power a virgin conceived, a virgin bore, and a virgin she remained. Pope St. Leo I So we know that the perpetual virginity of Mary had huge support in the early church, it's also a doctrine of the Roman Catholic Church and of the Eastern Catholic Churches, as well as the Orthodox Church. By itself, that means that most Christians have believed this and continue to believe it. The deepening of faith in the virginal motherhood led the Church to confess Mary's real and perpetual virginity, even in the act of giving birth to the Son of God made man. Catechism of the Catholic Church, paragraph 499, first sentence. So we know the teaching on the perpetual virginity of Mary was a Christian teaching of the early Catholic Church, which has been faithfully passed on through Catholicism and Orthodox churches of all stripes, up to 1517 when Martin Luther wrote his 95 Theses. After that, the Catholic and Orthodox churches continued to pass on this teaching. What about the early Protestants? It is an article of faith that Mary is mother of the Lord and still a virgin. Martin Luther Helvidius displayed excessive ignorance in concluding that Mary must have had many sons because Christ's brothers are sometimes mentioned. John Calvin I firmly believe that Mary, according to the words of the Gospel, as a pure virgin, brought forth for us the Son of God, and in childbirth and after childbirth forever remained a pure, intact virgin. Ulrich Zwingli The Blessed Virgin Mary, who as well after as when she brought him forth, Continued, a pure and unspotted virgin. John Wesley. The very founders of Protestantism never doubted this teaching. Therefore, denial of the perpetual virginity of Mary is a very recent fringe position, which isn't well supported and doesn't have any strong historical foundation within any Christian church. Next time, what reasons are there to think Mary was conceived without sin? That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.